Are you yep. sure? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. You didn't <laughs> count me down. You usually count me down. I was really hoping on that countdown. Anyway, no, it's too late now. Don't don't you dare. Um, welcome, everyone, to another episode of the GigaHub Weekly Show, where we discuss things that may be important to us, but are may not be important to you. I'm host one of three for Cryptober, Luis Del Torre. I'm host two of three, Daikaiju Tony. And I am last, Adam Crenn. I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh. Adam Crenn, I am last. <laughs> Epitaph. That's what you get for not playing along. Hey, first or last. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I made a realization like that today, but we'll talk about that later. All right. D shake hot a boy. Oh, yeah. I'm having some technical issues. Go ahead. All right. We're still good, though? Yeah, we're still good. <clears throat> Before we continue, let us shout out our wonderful sponsor, Cosmic Comics, the jewel of the Mojave Desert. Uh, being that it's Creeptober, we do have some scary-themed comics for you guys yeah. to check out that we have available at the store right, right here, right now. Don't come here now, but they are available, right? So come tomorrow. You went hardcore. I see yeah. what you have. You went hardcore. Right? Show up tomorrow. Yeah. In the morning. Oh, yeah, for sure. I figure, you know, you this, will, this, will, this will get a super weird demographic. But I got a lot of different <laughs> bugs. So who wants to start? Uh, uh, well, I can start. You can start. Looking for your favorite pre-code classic horror, horror comics? You know, the really grisly stuff from the 50s? <laughs> Before uh, everyone that, became a real, uh, real uh, wuss about everything. Uh-oh. We have a massive selection, actually. We have hundreds of pre-code classic books like this one. The Skeleton Hand, or this one, Black Cat, or even this one, Chamber of Chill. Ooh, how deliciously macabre. A lot of people think only EC was responsible for the pre-code, you know, sort of panic, but no, there no. was a lot there of There was other a lot of other yep. scary, gory scary books out there. Books. So. Like, some of the... Some of the cover art for that stuff, you can see someone's jaw and hands get blown up by a grenade. I'm like, oh my god, yeah, this that is was awesome. Black, I remember, black cat, I think. Yeah. I remember yeah. there was a. Uh, I had a bunch of um, uh, uh, trading cards from EC Horror, right? Yeah. And uh, one of them really struck me. It was a guy buried alive in a coffin, yeah. and that really struck me as a kid. So and some of the stories were dark in general, like this one fashion model who I think ends up killing her roommate by overdosing her with sleeping pills Probably, and, it, and yeah. it turns out um her contractor just wanted her for her body parts oh what yeah. Yeah. Some, <laughs> wow. of the, some of those stories were dark okay I mean, look at tales from the crypt i mean that whole show run i think yeah. every single episode appeared in a old ec comic really yeah i think huh. they were adaptations of the original book so huh. what do you what do you have there? What do you what do you guys have? Okay, what do you, you want me to go, Tony? Uh, yeah, you uh, go. I go. So uh, I know that there are specific kinds of horror fans. For you people into gore, uh, there is uh, oh, crossed just, by just gore. But, yeah, and oh, it's yeah. just gore. It's uh, Garth Ennis's crossed. Yeah. If you're into really violent, horrid, terrible things, yeah, yeah uh, when, when they masochistic stuff. We yeah. occasionally have people that come in and say, "I'm looking for something really twisted." We're like they cross. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We also have other things. Here's an Army of Darkness trade paperback yeah, right yeah. here. Bruce Campbell. And one of my absolute favorites since I was a kid, Hellboy. Nice. It's nice. not scary, but it's horror themed, and that's good. <laughs> All uh, right. So yeah, pick up some Hellboy. I love Mike Mignola's artwork. All right. What do you got, Tony? Got Venom, Lethal Protector, and we got a nice. bunch of Venom stuff in display since you know the new movie, Venom. Let there be carnage is out. Go watch it while you still can because that movie's awesome. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no. All right. Hey, we haven't seen it. No. So we don't know. Nope. In all honesty, I also haven't. All rights we should be. I, I, also, <laughs> I also haven't seen the first one either. So, uh, anyway, yeah. continue. What else? You, what else you got over there? Oh well, I just made this purchase today. Uh, oh yeah, that's Gorgo right. Attacks Gorgo. trade paperback yeah. has this, a bunch of old ads in it. And oh nice. This is Kong a and Gorgo. comics, I believe. When are they going to... Come on, Legendary. When are we going to hop on Gorgo versus Konga? Yeah, this is Charlton <laughs> Comics. Holy crap. Yeah. 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 Uh, so if you're looking for horror comics or just any comics in general, come on down. We have everything that you will ever need comics-wise and right. just general merchandise-wise. We have a bunch of new t-shirts. We have posters, board games, action figures, or dolls, as your mom calls them. <laughs> um, so come on down and pick something up for yourself. 
G Fuel. G Fuel. Carnage <laughs> G Fuel. Venom I th- G Fuel. <laughs> yep. No joke. There's a there's a G Fuel in there with PewDiePie on it, and I was really confused as to whether that was supposed to be Tom Hardy or uh, <laughs> um, uh, uh, what's his name. Uh, uh, well, What's the guy's name? What's the guy's name? Plays Cartage. Uh, why, why am I uh, Woody, Harrelson. Woody Harrelson? I'm like yeah. this because it looks like neither of them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But it was ended up being PewDiePie. PewDiePie. Anyway, yeah, yeah. That, that flavor's decent. It sucks that he's on it. <laughs> the flavor's good. That, that makes the flavor P- suck even more. PewDiePie All right. did kind of get buff at a certain point where he, I could kind of see the resemblance between him oh, and really? Tom Hardy. Yeah, yeah like, I was. PewDiePie yeah. posted a picture. I was himself, confused. Like I jumped that. Ba- yeah, I jumped I'm like, what happened to Tom Hardy? That's what I. <laughs> I jumped that bag man, bandwagon years ago. Anyway, uh, yeah, come on down. We do have a lot of G feels. So. <laughs> They're good. They yeah, good. sure. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> All right, so the topic for today's show is right in tune with Creeptober. But Creeptober is uh, the adapted works of one Mr. Stephen Tiberius King. <laughs> I don't think that's his middle name, but... Uh, okay. Oh, right. You're right. Sorry. Stephen Quinton King? I, um, um, Richard Bachman? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that guy. That guy. Yeah. That yeah. guy. Yeah. The guy who wrote Pet Cemetery, Richard Bachman. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, specifically, uh, his... We're his adaptation. His adaptation. So the movies that have been adapted from books and short yep, stories. So is. no Maximum Overdrive. So as, I was going to say, Tony, yeah. you can't do Maximum You can't do Maximum That was one of the ones I wanted to do was yeah. Maximum it's Overdrive. Not an as, perf- as perfect as that movie is, we can't do it. <laughs> that movie is perfect. Can you air five me? <laughs> right there. What? <laughs> oh my god, that movie's so bad. That movie's so that good. That is the height of his drug fueled writing. Oh, right and that, yes. I think that's what makes it great. I, mean, I would yeah, love yeah. to see more cocaine gotta... fueled movie scripts, <laughs> right. if and possible. You, yes, and you gotta like watch the trailer right before watching the movie because Stephen King pointing out the camera says, I will, I'm here to scare the hell out of you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Wow, that's when you knew he was on cocaine. Yeah, he was at the height of his arrogance and. <sighs> Yeah. Cocaine just, fueled. I whatever. just want arrogant cocaine fueled script writers. Is that too much to ask? Well, there's a lot of that. I'm gonna make a movie with Stallone in it. Like, oh crap, dude! It's 2021, bro. No he's, one wants this. He's 78. 78. Yeah. No, no, no. It'll be great. It'll be great. <laughs> Rocky gonna, comes back. Yeah, he's gonna get back in the ring. <laughs> he fights Rocky versus Pennywise. <laughs> Alexander Skarsgård. <laughs> Um, so, uh, we're talking about adapted works, right. um, not a maximum overdrive as nope. Adam has just rained on our parade. <laughs> um, specifically the good, the bad and what works and what doesn't work and why and why they, why it doesn't work. Now, I, I think I'm the least qualified person for this specific topic because I, I have not read any Stephen King books. Uh, not one? Not, not even one. in middle school? No, uh, no. That I've only that, ever that watched that Stephen like, King movies. Wow. That stuff was in my middle school library. And I'm like, wow, oh, really? this part, the, the, yeah, wow. surprisingly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I found more Four Leaf Clovers than I've read uh, Stephen King books. <laughs> and funny thing, like, my the librarian was more concerned of me re- reading Harry Potter over Stephen King. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow. like she was upset that you were reading like, Stephen. I don't that, think this is the same. This should be like around your grade level, kid. I'm like. But Stephen King's okay? Yeah. She, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Now, Way Pet Cemetery, that there's a good book. Way more adult. <laughs> I don't know why this librarian sounds like this, but here you go. All right. Pet well, Cemetery. I guess she smelled like cigars. So What's, uh, <laughs> she smelled like cigars. Wow. Is that what you said under your breath? <laughs> yes. You smell like cigars, <laughs> lady. You smell like cigars, stupid. Stupid, stupid All right, so uh, wh- so what do we what do we want to talk about? Do we want to talk about remakes? Do we want to talk about originals? Do we want to mm. talk about both? What are we jumping well, it on first? Wouldn't be originals; it would be adaptations. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, when I say originals, I mean like the old movies, or like do we do you want to talk about yeah, the like, remakes, well, like the new Pet Cemetery, Pet Cemetery or uh, let's ugh, get, that movie? Let me let me allow me to mm. give a quick overview of a sort of truncated overview of Stephen King's movie going career. <laughs> All um, right, a good part of it was um, cocaine field. So. <laughs> Yeah, well, certainly in the 80s. Uh, you know, it, it kind of all started, and I believe the first adaptation, of course, was Carrie. Mm. Yep. Um, Which and, is great. Mm-hmm. And then that sort of kick-started a career where a lot of his work started to become optioned for films and adapted mm-hmm. in the 80s. Um, I'm in theaters because uh, Phantom Events. Something happened? Blue screen? I, 
having we're having a lot of technical issues, so uh, I mean, sorry. Yeah, it's nobody's fault. I'm not sure what's going on. No, no, I'm apologizing um, to the people watching right, that right. we're having technical difficulties. I'm yeah. just gonna go. Um, home. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I'm just the, uh, you know, and then you start to get into the '80s where he started to do a lot of adaptations, but he also did works that were directly written for the screen, like I believe Cat's Eye, Creep Show. Mm-hmm. Um, um, the aforementioned Maximum, Maximum Overdrive. Overdrive. The best Stephen uh, King movie right, of all time. Right. Um, some of his works were adapted into many series because they were just too big for the big screen, like yep, The like Stand. Stand. Yep. Matter of um, fact, The Stand the book itself was too big since I think the publishing company says, like, yeah, you got to shorten this out. <laughs> just, fa- yeah, right. Yeah. Just because it wouldn't fit into a book that we could glue together. Right. And also famously adapted into the Stanley Kubrick overblown, although I probably get crap for saying that, The Shining. <gasps> yeah, It's a yeah. good movie. <gasps> yeah. not Everyone having, knows not that Stephen having... King's best adapted movie is The Dark Tower. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that was also adapted at one point. Idris Alba gave a star-stunning performance. Well, I have heard for what it is, it's good, but it's certainly not the Dark Tower. It's trying, like, it's one of those movies that kind of tries hard to start a whole series, kind of like yeah. I don't know, Hellboy yeah. or that oh. Snake Eyes movie. It's like, oh, we're gonna have this whole big Stephen King cinematic universe that's gonna like, connect all the other older movies. I'm like, well, that would be the are, are you Tower. Ta- yeah. Are you talking about the new Hellboy? Oh, yeah, the new Hellboy. Okay, I was about ready to yell at you. I was like, no, "No, the Guillermo del Toro Hellboys are awesome. Yes, the new Hellboy. Uh, A little bit dated, but awesome. (laughs) Anyway. Yeah, the new Hellboy movie wanted to have a BPRD movie after. I'm like, no. So, you know, Stephen King, of course, his stuff was really heavily adapted throughout the 80s. It it, it really settled into more miniseries in the 90s. Yep. Um, I think he even was Rose, what was it, Rose, Rose Red? That's the Haunted Mansion. I think that was written for the screen or yeah. for a miniseries. Hmm. Um, he also started to do some TV shows in the was Salem 90s. Lot like, uh, Salem's Lot was a book. It's okay. one of his earlier books. It was a book. That was, actually, that was a miniseries in the early 80s, and then it was another miniseries <laughs> in the 90s. Um, and then, of course, you know, he kind of had a lull. Um, the guy has been cranking out books this whole time, by the way. Oh, yeah, for still sure. Uh, yeah, Take notes, George R.R. Uh, R. Martin. He reti- He supposedly or, or he announced his own retirement years ago, and he's still cranking out That books. just yes. means that he's only going to write five books instead of ten well, books a month. That's the thing. <laughs> he does write less. He does write less. Um, and then, of course, um, more recently, I think one of the most recent adaptations would be Dr. Sleep, which is an adaptation of the book Dr. Sleep. Right. Yep. Um, and which we'll, is a, a, a sequel, right? To The Shining. It's a, a sequel, sequel to, to The Shining. Shining. Yeah, yeah it yes. actually is a sequel to The Shining. The movie, which, that, the movie that you love? Which you think, like, why would that need a sequel? But well, we'll get into that. <laughs> um, <laughs> why would that need a sequel? Why would that need a sequel? Yeah. Um, so what do you got? What ada- well, yeah. We only have so much time, of course. So what adaptation would you guys like to talk about? Um, let's let's talk about one of my favorites since we can't talk about Maximum Overdrive. <laughs> Freaking Nazi Germany around here, man. <laughs> um, oh, God. <laughs> I, know that, I know that guy. That's an inside joke <laughs> is from an where we used joke. to work. Um, Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery original was a movie. Remake? Uh, I haven't watched the remake because okay. I like the original. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not a fan of remakes. Uh, the remake is. I'm not it's, normally a fan of remakes. Uh, so. yeah. well, I mean, if you listen, if you were to, as a trusted friend, if you were to tell me it's good, I might check it out. But honestly, just from. It's the, not as hardcore as the first one, but at the same time, it does have a really grim ending that I was surprised of. Yeah. Like, it has an ending that's like slightly more screwed up than the original. I'm like, oh, okay, boy. dang. Wow. Yeah, that yeah that was a real. I love horror movies with real downer endings. Yeah, yeah. Um, your Night of the Living Dead's and whatnot. Your uh, what was the other one? Um, uh, the one where they blew up Cincinnati. Uh, why do I keep oh, forgetting uh, uh, Louisville? That's Return of the Living Dead. Return of the Living Dead. Yeah, uh-huh. just like real downer endings yeah. are like so perfect for horror movies. Right. And that one was. Uh, I think that was like a, my first taste into like into a movie that just sort of ends badly for everyone. <laughs> yep. I was so used to movies ending with ha- happy endings right. as a kid. But, man, that movie really creeped me out as a kid. I was, I think, 19 or 20 when I saw it. Mm-hmm. And when the sister showed up. Yeah, oh, my God. That yeah. freaked me out. I was yeah, like, yeah. I was in the military. And I was like, oh, I can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> the cat really did me in as a kid. Oh, yeah. Like, even now when I look at it, like the, I don't know how they did I don't know how they made the cat look that scary. Oh, yeah. Um, but holy hell, if it doesn't still hold up. Like, I remember watching it not that long ago, and, like, the cat's still freaky looking. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. cat's did, still freaky. Now, did you read the book? No. Okay, and you didn't read the book. So I didn't read the I book. I was the no. only one that read the book and saw the movie. Um, want me to tell you about the ending of the remake? 
Begu- well, yeah, we'll get there, though. Yeah. Begu- Fun fact, Fred Gwynn was in that movie. He was. Who was, uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, what's yeah. his name? One of the, the, the dad from the Monsters. Uh, um, yeah. mm-hmm. What was his name? Mr. Munster. Mr. Munster. <laughs> Mr. Frank and um, Munster. Frank, yeah. What was his Herman name? Munster. Herman Munster. Herman Munster, yeah. yeah. Uh, which I had no idea for years and years. He did sound oh, familiar really? and he looked familiar. And then when I found out, I'm like, no, that's him. Now I can't get it out of my... Now I just hear Herman Munster whenever I see that movie. Now, yeah. to be fair, I read that book many, many years ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, How well adapted would you say it is? You know, in my mind's eye, I seem to remember it being pretty well adapted for the mm-hmm. most part. I... The only thing I remember being sort of different that I don't remember the movie really focusing on was the Wendigo had the Wendigo oh, yeah. was mentioned as being a spirit in the woods that actually sort of did or was responsible for what was going on. It was mm-hmm. more it almost took more of a cosmic horror bent where it was sort of like this yeah. this being right. beyond our understanding that was sort of causing it. It wasn't just some the, mysterious tribal burial ground. Yeah. The Wendigo was yeah. Classic not only trope. referenced, but I think you saw a silhouette of it in the remake. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, wow. So they reference it. In the new okay. Uh-huh. That's but, all I really remember, yeah. Um, in the book, did it end with the whole family turning into uh, undead? I don't believe so, but Forget- I don't remember. Oh, okay. Forget- Is that how it ended in the, the, oh. the new one? In the whole in the movie, like yeah, you they see, all come back. You get to see a kid, the the, the son locked in the car with the, with the car seat, from what I remember, and then the, the rest of the family is about to open the door and they're all like undead. <laughs> oh wow! No about fair, to get the kid. daddy. No. no oh fair. my god! Yeah. Yeah. Listen, that movie. That's looking creepy. back on it now, there's a lot of it that's really ridiculous, but oh, I yeah. think it still holds up. Scary creepy, wise, yeah. when you when you bring the kid, the kid really freaked me out too. Yeah. Like, the cat was bad enough, and then the kid started showing up and doing all these weird things. Like, he killed Fred Quinn. And, yeah. then, and then ate him. And then ate him. And I'm like, this is kind of adorable, but, you know, like... No fair, Daddy. Yeah, he's, yeah no fair, Daddy. Like, oh. he's, trying, he's, doing so, he's doing his best. And, right. of course, the dad didn't learn his lesson like an idiot. Uh, I'm going to yeah, go yeah. bury my wife in the burial ground like a moron, because it worked out so great the f- out so first well, two right. times. Yeah. yeah. So... And I know um, there was a Pet Cemetery 2 movie. But oh, yeah. That wasn't Ed, based on that, anything. That came yeah. out in the 90s, yeah. Mr. Krabs. Ed Furlong. <laughs> oh, yeah. shoot. Mr. Krabs. Edward Furlong and Mr. Krabs. Yeah. Clancy, yeah. Clancy Brown. The yeah. Kurg, was it? Yeah. The, yeah. the Kurgan. Yeah. The Kurgan, yeah. The Kurgan. Have, have you ever, I know we're getting a little slightly off track, but have you ever oh, heard sorry. Clancy Brown talk about uh, Highlander? Uh, oh, no. yeah, yeah. He didn't make anything from that movie, mm-hmm. and he gets no residuals. Oh, mm-hmm. no. But it did kind of jumpstart his career. So. Yep. <laughs> I mean, that still, that sucks, though. Yeah. I mean, he's like they they such a pivotal a, part of that movie. Right. They hired him for a song, and he gets no residuals. Plus, yeah. plus he looked badass. Sean the Kurgan was, was pretty high, badass. Yeah, Sean Connery was the highest paying actor in that movie. Yeah. Of course so he is. Back to, uh, back to, uh, which I guess they were surprised he even wanted to do it. <laughs> when they offered it to him, they were like, really? Sure, I'll do it. You're going to do it? Yeah. And that's where all their budget went. Sounds like fun. It sounds like fun. I'm already. I, I don't know if you've noticed. I'm already doing my Spanish accent. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Back. Okay. Back. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um. Anything else we want to talk about Pet Cemetery? I mean, a, as far as a, as far as a adaptation. I mean, the movie was effective. I mean, was the newer movie effective? Uh, you said it wasn't as effective as the <clears throat> original. Like it's. Okay, so it doesn't get as grim as the original until like the very end, where yeah. the family gets the last gets the last member of the family to turn him into you one gotta, of them. You got to tell me—is there visions of her sister in the new one? Oh god, uh, she freaked me out. She was really. She was, she really was played by a guy. Apparently, really? Apparently, I had yeah. no idea. I, think, I haven't seen it in a while. Nah, like, that's last, freaky. That freaked me out. I, like I red boxed that movie. Yeah. That, that's how much I remember <laughs> off uh, of okay. it. It's so weird. The, the best actors in that movie were Denise Crosby and and yeah. Fred Gwynn. Yeah. The da- the guy who played the dad was so flat. He he, he just yeah. he he kept falling really flat. He was in a show at the time, I think, some science fiction show where he oh, was really? like a cop from the future or something. Yeah. Future cop. Yeah. That something. sounds cool. We'll return cool. after these messages. Yeah. It was like a whole thing because he was a he's a white guy, obviously. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's just... from the future where white <laughs> people a... were minorities. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. No. I swear. I swear. Oh that's, my God. Which that's which, every white person's nightmare. Nightmare. Which, which honestly, that's gonna happen. <laughs> Believe it or not, we're not, oh, yeah. we're not that far away. Yeah, we're not that far away. <laughs> but anyway, don't say it like you're scared. Um, anyway, yes. So uh, I, again, I haven't Was watched it an the... effective adaptation. Yes, I, I believe. I mean, again, I haven't read the book. Um, I, I believe it's effective in what it was supposed to do. It's supposed to be like a weird, creepy film. Yeah. And it, when you forget all the, again. When I watched it as a kid, the whole thing was freaky. When yeah. I watched it as an adult, there are some parts it's where I'm silly, like, well, this yeah, is silly and kind of stupid, creepy, yeah. but it's still it's still weird. 
It's still creepy. I, I mean, I, I think I can appreciate it more as an adult than I could as a kid. Yeah, I think the movie <clears throat> was effective. I think the movie was more effective than the book because I don't remember the book scaring me, except for the apprehension about the road with the truckers driving on it too fast. All the time. Which was in the movie. It's in the yeah. movie. So. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and you have that same apprehension like, oh, God, oh, here they come again. Oh. Yeah, right. So, yeah, I'd say it was an effective effective adaptation. Yeah, well, yeah. I'd I'd say the first movie, the original, is a more effective adaptation than the remake, despite yeah. the remake having mention of the Wendigo. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they did that reference. Um, how about Salem's Lot? Well, do some Salem's Lot? Sure, let's talk about yeah. Salem's, Salem's Lot. Lot. Now, I actually saw the original miniseries first. Okay. Um, that goes back to like 1981 or two or something like that. I mean, to this day. There's still the scene that just gets everybody where um, his friends at the window. Mm. <laughs> yeah, Danny, come to the window. Dan- or is it Danny? Or I don't remember his name. Is it Danny? Uh, it, but um, I remember being young because at that point I think I was like 12 or something when it came out. Mm-hmm. It scared the crap out of me. Really? It was just like, what okay. the heck? Yeah. Um, I can honestly say that there's only two books that I read that actually creeped me out, and The Shining or the S- Salem's Lot was one of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Salem's Lot freaked me out. The book. What was it? What was it about it that freaked um, you out? Was it very atmospheric? Was it? Was it like? Yeah, it 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 draw it drew you in, and when the vampires were kind of like stalking, it was creepy and, mm, and okay. sort of oppressive feeling, and just wow, yeah, like, like a like a like you're following around like a stalker or something. Well, right? Yeah, because well, more like the fact that it almost certain aspects of it seemed inevitable because what happens which i don't think happens in the original miniseries it does in the second miniseries but in the book you know the the town is being consumed everybody in the town is becoming vampires yeah and it's getting out of control fast it's like mm. a more subtle version of dirty as a night right right and it's that feeling that the book kind of is like Ugh. yeah um now as far as the adaptation goes um the Oddly enough, the uh, the later adaptation in the 90s with Rob Lowe mm-hmm. is the more faithful adaptation, but I don't think it works as well yeah. as creating some of the tension. So, so it, it's apparent to me, especially in yeah. movies like these, it, and, and even Tony was talking about it when we were talking about uh, <laughs> Pet Cemetery. Yeah. Like the the newer adaptations seem to have uh, seem to be a little more book accurate. Yeah. To where like the movies or the series or whatever seems to take a few more liberties, which seem to kind of work in their favor. Sometimes I think sometimes with the uh, with the mini series, I think there's two problems of why they don't necessarily work as well. Mm-hmm. One is I think the talent involved isn't as strong creatively. Now that's not an entirely fair statement because. I think they're also handicapping themselves by trying to be more faithful to the book. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Because now instead of sort of taking ownership of the work, you're trying to do the work for somebody else. So there's a certain gap that happens, I think, sure. creativity-wise. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you're just remaking it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we'll get into that. I will expand on that later when it comes to another adaptation I want to do um, later on. But... uh the original, I mean, there's just some scenes that are classic. The whole thing with, um, um, uh, oh, gosh dang it, uh, the name is escaping me. The uh, look at me now scene? Well, there's, you know, the whole thing, yeah, there's that. The, yeah. There's the Nosferatu <laughs> vampire, which is played by, uh, he's an old German actor that was actually in Star Trek. He played like an Andorian in the old show. Really? Um, yeah, he's. He played like the Nosferatu kind of vampire, which is not in the book, by the way. Mm. Okay, um, so the vamp, but the vampires look like that in the book with the bringing yellow eyes and all that. Uh, like the weird buck honestly, teeth. Honestly, I don't remember them having glowing eyes, but I don't really remember. But I think that worked in the original miniseries so well. Even though watching it as an older, the miniseries feels horribly truncated. Like you just feel like dragged from one scene to the next to the next to the next. Like there's not a lot of development. It's just like you're getting these quick, <laughs> quick cuts of everything because there's a lot going on. Right. Um, but there's some just great scenes. Almost like it's almost like a movie of anecdotes. <laughs> and there's a lot of great anecdotes. Like the whole scene with the wife that gets up and they burn the cross into her face and she kind of just freaks out and just fades into nothing yeah you know the kid at the window <laughs> yep um the the i'm gonna come up to your window like that the now. groundskeeper grave digger when he's just waiting in his room for the guy to come and he's just sitting there which i recently found a meme where it's like my 
my clothes in my chair at 3 a.m. and it's him sitting <laughs> in a chair. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. He's, I can't think of the actor. Now his name's escaping me. He's like, a, he's in a lot of Clint Eastwood films. Um, and he's, he's, uh, God dang it. His name will come to me, but he okay. plays like the grave digger groundskeeper. And he, his scenes are creepy as him as a vampire, things like that. Um, the newer adaptation had some of that. It actually was more accurate with Rutger Hauer as the main vampire, mm. which was he—he he was more of a Dracula-like figure, right? Instead of right. like this weird monster. Yeah. Um, I kind of, for me, the adaptation, even though I do like the book, I think the Nosferatu adapta- adaptation and the earlier one worked better because he was always hidden and behind the scenes, and it was always—it always felt like this lurking menace that Straker, who was like his, oh no, Straker was the vampire, mm-hmm. who Barlow. No. Oh, no, no, Barlow no, was Barlow a vampire. Was a, no, in Thirty Days of Night. Yeah. yeah, Straker was the was the was the sort so, of the human so, minion, yeah. and he was always trying to protect him and keep him hidden. And I thought it worked better because it wasn't until the town started getting almost consumed is when Barlow started to show himself because he's like this hideous creature, right? Even yeah. though he's intelligent, you know. But he was more in his actions. He was more feral. I, I just I thought that worked better. Mm. Maybe because I saw it first. I don't know, but um. That seems like almost think? like a primal fear, right? Yeah. Of yeah, like yeah. Of living in a civilized world and yeah. still now, being somewhat of an animal this in some way, shape, or form. Most monsters, even yeah. He's yeah, smart, yeah, yeah. And he's now, being protected by human minions. Now, I only seen the original miniseries. Oh, yeah. I didn't read the book. Didn't see the other yeah. miniseries. I didn't even know there was another miniseries. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty forgettable. Oh. Vampire with yellow eyes, freaky. Yeah. Uh, tons of memorable scenes. Um, would say it's actually. Um, because there's a lot of good vampire movies out there, but right. I'd, I'd say it's up there with... Mm, yeah, it's not good. It just yeah, has a lot of really good parts. Yeah. Like the whole scene in the end, or near the end, where they're they're trying to drive a stake through them, and like you, the light's swinging, mm-hmm. and like every time the light swings, you can see like into the basement, and they're just crawling oh, like yeah. really slow. That's creepy as hell. <laughs> it's creepy, yeah. Just stuff like that. Yeah. Right. Really good stuff. Really okay. good stuff. All right. Should we move on to what Tony's got? Uh, well, let me talk about the second adaptation real quick. Oh. Much more book accurate. Okay. But ultimately pretty forgettable. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. It it has scenes from the original book that aren't in the earlier one. Yeah. But it's just, I don't know, it just didn't work. And honestly, I barely remember it. Wow. So, yeah. Okay. It's just, it was kind of forgettable. So right. what, when, did, when did that one come out? Mid nineties, somewhere in the. There was a lot of Stephen King miniseries in the nineties. Yeah. That's when they. That's when they did the Stand and they redid. Oof. They redid uh, the Shining. Mm. Um, uh. So you want to talk about the Shining? We can uh, talk about the Shining. Heck we, yeah. don't, we don't have to spend a lot of time because it is kind of long. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Everyone's seen The Shining. Right. Um, Most horror fans consider it a classic. I think it's overrated. As a kid, Kubrick, I Kubrick's Shining. I, right. I think I appreciate it more as an adult than I did it when I watched it when I was younger. Yeah. I know I was told it was scary, and I watched it, and there were some parts that were genuinely creepy. But yeah. I think when I was young, the movie moved way too slow for me. Yeah. Um, it wasn't until I got older that I was able to appreciate it See, more, I, but. I, I think it's a I think it's a good film. I don't think it's the greatest thing in horror. No, um, for sure not. There is like a creeping tension in the movie that's really great, but yeah. ultimately, for like a horror movie, it's not the scariest thing I've seen, and it's not it's not the greatest thing I've ever seen. Right. right. Um, yeah, it is very much like that horror answer of like, what's the what's your the best movie ever? Like, oh, Seven Samurai. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> it's the greatest horror movie ever The Shining of course well yeah <laughs> I saw it when I was like 13 it, it did freak me out yeah it is, it is a it weird kind of creepy it actually traumatized me for a few years it is a creepy movie and, mm. and then I saw it again when I was like 20 I was like it's kind of boring is it funny the first the first <laughs> 25 something like that the first semblance that I got of that movie was The Simpsons uh, Treehouse of Horrors uh, which is legitimately creepy which I had no idea was a movie until someone and, had told me that it, it was a movie and yeah, that's when I watched it and they do a great twist on one scene in The Simpsons that's actually way creepier in The Simpsons right. where the lightning flashes and it's like all work and no play and it's like home, written yeah, all over yeah, it's, over all over. it's like whoa Oh, that's hey, pretty Marge. creepy. Um, so what do you uh, think of the Kubrick, St- Stanley Kubrick Shining? Saw it in middle school. Uh, middle school? Wow. Well, that's probably when I saw it. Actually. Um, that's likely when I saw it. Maybe even you? younger. Uh, yes, and it was super, super unsettling. The lady in the bathtub freaked yes, me out. Yes, the lady yeah. in the bathtub freaked me out. Some scenes I didn't get at the time, like guy with the bear dog costume. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what was that? <laughs> well, that was the whole party. Yeah, that was the whole um, party. 
party from the 1920s. Actually, like Duvall was really good in that. Yeah. When she was being chased around yeah. by Jack Nicholson, I thought that was a very good scene. Yeah. Unfortunately, she was not treated well. So yeah, yeah. She was, yeah. Cooper, she was driven to that point. I'm Cooper sure most of that fantastic acting was all trauma, I'm sure. Yep. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, didn't rewatch watch it until high school. Um, yeah. Thought it was a lot better when it's when because I got most of the unsettling moments and like yeah. um, I got the idea that uh, that the evil lurking within was Jack the whole time. Um, oh, covering my mouth. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, what else? I thought it was great. I liked the cinematography, all yeah. that soundtrack as well. Yeah. Um, don't think it's Kubrick's greatest movie, and I don't think it's worth making a whole documentary about. Yeah, I that, think that <laughs> documentary is so bad. I think that I, I only made it like twenty minutes. That documentary was so dumb. Here's like, what I here's here's how I, here's how I equate that movie. That movie is like um, it's like imagine, imagine the fanciest dish you could think of. Yeah. Right. It's all cooked up and it's wonderful and it's on your plate. Right. It's perfect. It's a perfect meal. Yes. Now imagine if all I did was take all the ingredients from that meal, threw it in a pot, and gave you the pot. <laughs> that that's what I think The Shining is. I think The Shining has a lot of separate parts that are very good, yeah. um, but like mm-hmm. as a whole, to make it like the one of the great movies that that it's yeah. touted to be, it's certainly a good movie. Yeah. I think it's not a. I don't think personally yeah. it's a great movie, but yeah, it's, I th- I think it's equivalent to like just putting all those ingredients in a pot and giving you the pot and telling you it's the greatest dish you ever had. Yeah. To end off my <clears> thoughts on <throat> The Shining, like. People make it out to be Stanley Kubrick's magnum opus, and <sighs> no, <laughs> like it's the movie like, oh, Stanley Kubrick, like he wanted to hurt people with this movie. When we all like, know it's wanted... eyes wide shut. Yes, yes, I was, I was about to say that <laughs> the movie that Stanley Kubrick wanted to make a stance in society was it's eyes wide shut, and it's the movie that he died for. Now, now I have to rewatch that movie because I didn't care for it. Um, so Stephen King famously disowned The Shining. Yep. Really? Kubrick. He thought Kubrick was so way off base with what the book was about, which is true if you've read mm-hmm. the book. Technically speaking, yes. Um, well, that leads into the second adaptation, which was a miniseries in the 90s, which was filmed at the hotel that The Shining was based off of, mm. which is which is actually called the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, even though it's called the Overlook in the, the Overlook, book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, now, how do you guys feel about that adaptation? Did you see that? One? I'll be honest; I had no idea there was a TV really? adaptation. There, there was a miniseries adaptation. Is it good? It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's it's more true to the book. Yes. I I would say overall, it's not as creepy as oh yeah definitely. the Kubrick version. But the woman in the bathtub is way more creepy. Holy crap! It's it's strange. In the, in the, uh, yeah. I uh, in the TV version. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Just because she grabbed the kid. Yeah. Well, that that's from the book. The 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 woman in the bathtub, her whole thing was Danny. It wasn't Jack like it was in the. Mm-hmm. Um, it in the wasn't movie? Jack like it was in the movie. Yeah, it was all about Danny because Danny had the power, and she they used her to shock Danny so they could tap into his power. Because if you notice, even in the Kubrick version, actually, once that scene happens is when things start to get really crazy because now they're drawing on Danny's psychic energy to manifest themselves physically. Right. Um, that's a big part of it. Mm. I'm going to show you a picture of her. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, did, yeah. did you see that one? Yeah. I, uh, well, You didn't like it? Coming from someone who saw the Kubrick version first and uh, knowing about the book after... Oh yeah, my god! It's super, super unsettling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, is that my ex-wife? Did you have a picture of my ex-wife? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't have any. Like, oh my god! <laughs> I that is way scary. <laughs> that was so good. I yeah. honestly thought uh, she was creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's and de- she spoke. She's like, "Hello, Danny." Oh, I was yeah. like, "Whoa!" Anyway, it, go it ahead, was sorry. definitely way less subtle than the Kubrick version. Since, yeah. And there are like there are actual ghosts that you get to see, like, cr- like what? the 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 anim- the cut up animal um plant. Things. The, yeah, the, the shrub- topi- topiaries. Yeah. yeah, the topiaries actually came to life, and that was from the book. That's from the that's book. From the book. Yeah, there was no maze. Yeah, I and think the maze was probably more effective for a movie, though. But that's a personal thing. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. And there was a full fledged party scene with Stephen King playing right. the trumpet or right, right. something like that. Stephen King was also, I realized, in Pet Cemetery yeah, when I watched it a few years ago. Yep. He plays a priest. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. A, he does a lot of cameos on his own stuff. I definitely thought it was super cheesy. Uh, yeah, but yeah. yeah, that there was. It the, has some effective scenes. Yeah, the really like like the woman in the bath. Yeah. Um Rebecca De Mornay I think 
works because in the book she was described as like ridiculously beautiful Jack's wife, mm. but she yeah. kind of like committed to him, so she her career kind of like fell by the wayside. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't like that version. The, the the TV adaptation. Um, the of, ending was a little hokey. Yeah, it, I didn't, it got I didn't, a little much. Yeah, I didn't, a little, I didn't, little too. It was a little too touchy feely. Yeah. Little too warm, oh, was it? A little too warm. Like, fuzzy. A little too warm and fuzzy. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. blew himself up in the hotel. Yeah. Well, that happened, but in the book, that's what happened. Yeah. But then the whole after scene where his dad shows up as a ghost, and I was like, okay, that. Oh, I, as a force that, ghost, nice. That wasn't from the. That wasn't from the book at all. Yeah, a little too warm and fuzzy. There. Did it play that ending Star Wars overture? As he looked out and he <laughs> saw his dad. <laughs> no, no, yeah. The celebration on Endor. That's yeah. kind of what it was like, though. Yep, nub. <laughs> yep, nub. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, Danny, I, listen, yo, no. listen, Yeah, yo, it's, no. it's, 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 it's. Yep, nub, daddy, yep, nub. It's more effective than a lot of the other miniseries, I think. Oh, okay. Um, and it has some great scenes. <laughs> Would um, you recommend that I go back and watch it? Or yeah, is, is, I, at this point, that is it. One, that one is worth it, I okay. think. Um, because of. That one understands what the book's about more. Sure. And, you know, there's certain things, I think, that work fine. Like, he did have a big croquet mallet in the book. Yep, it wasn't an axe. <laughs> yeah, it was a mallet. It, it and was a mallet, yeah. Where big freaking it, mallet. It was, like, something about fruit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Very Gallagher-esque. Yeah. And, his, and the TV version, his eyes were white, and his teeth was all... Uh, it actually looked more like he was possessed than him going mad. Well, he wasn't possessed, Um you know, the whole point of the book was the ghosts use alcoholism because he was an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. He was a recovering alcoholic when they stayed there. And that was what the ghosts did. They just kept picking at him and picking at him until p- he started drinking. And they used that to ba- basically make him their cat's paw, for lack of a better term. Right. To right. make him to just, they kept picking at, you know. Because, Rather than control him, they well, basically well, the just picked idea, away at him, right? You know, the whole idea is all of us, you know. You know, there's always two sides. There's always two, you know, there's a whole... Duality. Native, yeah, indigenous American saying about the two wolves, the hate and love, the one you feed gets stronger. It's that, basically, because you have that side that resents and is angry at everything. Mm -hmm. And you have the other side that's love and caring and all those things. And the ghosts really picked on that side of him because he was a... I think he was a failed writer in the book. And um, the ghosts really picked on that side and focused on the fact that his wife and kid were holding him back. And oh, yeah. oh, boy. Then he started drinking, and it just, they met, and, it, and all that anger and rage manifested through alcohol, mm-hmm. uh-huh. and they were able to point him and his family, right. basically, yeah. so they could absorb the kid. And that's the, that's the thing. they could manifest physically and, with the kid's power. And that, yeah, I saw, I saw that. That's the, that's, the por- that's the important thing to learn about right. this movie, is not to get married. <laughs> So okay, yeah. Oh, was it the other thing? <laughs> no. Okay. Not. Just you no. know, don't succumb to your rage. I think is probably. Or the don't get married, right. and there won't be any rage to succumb yeah, to. I, possibly. I'm kidding. I'm always kidding. check on your boiler rooms. Yeah, always check. On <laughs> always boiler check rooms. your boiler rooms. Um, leading into that, I don't want to talk too much about it because I there is another adaptation I do want to talk about. But leading into that is the sequel, Doctor Sleep, mm. um, which I just watched that movie just to prepare for the show. How was that? Um, honestly, that movie was. Really good. Really? Um, yeah, it's really good. And now, is it is um, it a sequel to the the original? Yeah. It, you uh, know, Stanley Kubrick movie, mm-hmm. or is it? The, it's it is. both, and that's why it works. The woman in the tub actually looks like an amalgamation of both the old lady and the one from the miniseries. Oh, and, the hotel itself looks like. The and old. the hotel is from The Shining. Yeah. Um, obviously, the hotel in the book gets destroyed, mm. but not. You know, there, I don't want to talk about the differences to the book too much because I didn't want to talk about it. But it was remarkably effective and did touch upon what the movie, I mean, what the book was supposed to be about, not so much Kubrick's movie, which I thought was really good. Um, I can say that uh, the book or the movie, Dr. Sleep, has a way more of a kind of a downer ending than the, yeah. than the book. The book actually does that warm, fuzzy force ghost thing with his father that Mm. is not in the movie at all it's actually the opposite his father had succumbed so completely to his rage that he was just gone oh and that sort of comes out in the movie and it focuses on the whole aspect of the alcoholism being the method of that it's a very it's a relatively short scene but i think in the movie dr sleep it's a very important scene to sort of illustrate, yeah, it's almost path. like a sequel and a patch seen, to like. Yeah, the, and my the favorite scene was um, when bar. he's at the bar. Yeah, the, it was a re- scene, it was not yeah. only a recreation of what was happening in Stanford. It didn't feel soulless because yeah, um, it actually shows how Danny is slowly turning into his, his father. father. Yeah. yeah, 
It didn't, yeah. So it's in the really sequel, good. it's his son. His son is. Yeah. Okay. But you're normally so, Danny, okay. Danny grown up, and he's actually recovered. When the movie really gets going, he's a recovered alcoholic. He's been oh, sober for okay. about eight years. But there's a lot of things that lead up to that point mm. um, because – I mean, listen, I trust your judgment. If you say it's yeah, good, it's good. I'll, I'll give it a try. I really I'll watch did like it. it. Yeah, yeah, I'll wanna, have to watch I it. I plan yeah. on watching it again, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Watching it again. Yeah. Okay. I'll have to check it out. It was good. It was really okay. good. Is there anything else? Is there, what else um, did you want to talk about? Not with that. About? Dr. Sleep, I think, was a really interesting adaptation because it did pay homage to the book and – the actual Kubrick movie and tied up a lot of things that didn't make sense in the Kubrick movie. I, well, it's like I said, it's, it's like a it's a sequel and a patch. It's almost yeah. like a yeah, patch. It of was. Movies, it yeah. was. Um, so let's get into the, I, probably the last adaptation, unless there's something else you guys want to talk about. I mean, I don't Running know if it's man. the one that I want. Mi- that? The Running Man. Right. The Running Man. Right. <laughs> oh, okay. I was going to say Misery. I love that movie, by the way, even though it's so different from the book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> misery? No. no or Running The Running Man. man. Okay. Yeah, misery. Now we misery can, God, we could go on with this show forever. We yeah, there's a lot of good. There's a lot of good ones. There's let's a lot of good ones. Yeah, let's have a whole. Listen, next now, week's episode, all maximum overdrive. <laughs> now, to be fair, I never read Misery. Uh, uh, well, I only saw well, the movie. you'll be surprised to know that neither have I. Neither, yeah. <laughs> Did you read the book? No. Great movie though. Great movie. Yeah. And launched uh, what so much career? tension, so much tension, and then like dread. That sort of like, uh, would you even call it catharsis? Right, like it just builds up. And then something terrible happens. And like, oh, my God, okay, maybe that's the worst thing that's going to happen. But it, but it, and then it builds up again, like, and then bad things happen and again. And there's a lot of movies that sort of use that sort of tension release, tension release. Mm-hmm. Yep. But I I don't think very many use it as effectively as that movie. Yeah. Because he is so hobbled by the injury she gives him. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the fact that it's he was so... in a car, car wreck. You feel his helplessness. Yeah. That's, like, that's, Ugh. listen, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, is all, that is all the acting. Uh-huh. Yeah. That is all uh, acting. That is that is uh, one of James Con's later roles, and he was amazing in it. Yeah, yep. and and uh, what's her name? Um, that launched her career. Yeah. Uh, uh, why am I blanking on her She's name now? Too. She is fantastic. She's one of the best things about American Horror Story, and her name is escaping. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a sh- no. I'm gonna look it up. That's a shame. We should not forget her right, name. Right, right. And I know who she is. But, oh, don't don't. Don't give me crap about this, okay? Because no, no, I'm I, I'm I older. I forget stuff all the time, and sometimes uh, it's the easiest thing. So, and I, and I like how like it slowly escalates. Kathy Bates. Kathy, Kathy Bates. Bates. There yes. we go. I like how it slowly escal- escalates. Like when she first rescues right. him, like okay, there might be something off with her right. until you like sees the newspaper clippings. Like okay, she's she's nuts. She uh, she's freaking yeah, nuts. Yeah. she's nuts. She's not a super fan. I'm yeah. in, I'm in real danger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. That's a good Misery's thing. good flick, right? Yeah. But yep. nobody read the book, so we can't really talk no, about yeah, it. No, yeah, yeah. I could talk about Running Man because I've read the uh, short yeah. story. I know it's completely different. Uh, big, biggest difference. But I do love that movie because it's so is, entertaining. Yeah. Biggest difference is that he's at, uh, main character's entering contest for money right. for his family, and in the end, he finds out his family's dead, yeah. so he decides to commit suicide by just driving an airplane into yeah. the show. Yeah. Um. So how about it? Oh yeah, famously adapted adapted twice. I, oh. I read the book. Have you read the book? Uh I got like it's a long book. I didn't yeah, even finish it, is, it. It's uh it's the height of his cocaine fueled writing. I got, <laughs> I got to the part that was an actual book, not not a movie. I got to the part where all the kids were inhaling a bunch of uh, they they the first time they communicated with the turtle. Like, yeah, they were so, like in in a bonfire going. Long story short, the book is weird. <laughs> yes. The book, a lot of Stephen King's books are a little odd, but that book is probably weirder than most. Yes. Um, so how about doing... the original miniseries? I actually like a lot of aspects of it. Yeah. I know it was big at the time. It was probably regarded as one of the more successful of his miniseries mainly, adaptations. F- mainly, okay, well, the thing I like about the miniseries over the remake is how, the ha- how it handles... The, the origins and mystery of Pennywise, because in the remake movies, they just flat out say, he's an alien. Yeah. <laughs> he landed on Earth one day, and... They talk about his... In the original miniseries, they talk about no, his No, in the remake. In the remake, oh. in the remake, they just flat out say, he's an alien. Yeah. But uh, in the miniseries, well, like, you don't know what he is, like... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's true. They did kind because of Because it, it works in the context of the original sins... Well, they can't really explain. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, you can't. I was gonna say, in, how in, do you explain him in a movie? Yeah, and in, in the in the book, he does a lot more wacky stuff. Right. And yeah. And he actually he he turns into like 
things from movies and all sorts of things that scared him as little kids. Yeah, the he was I was a teenage werewolf at one point, the yep. mummy, like all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Uh-huh. So. Yep. So okay, so I have not seen the new adaptation. Oh. How does the new adaptation measure decent. up to the uh, mini series or even the book? I know the the second movie kind of got pooped on a little bit. People, oh, it's not as scary. It's not as good. Well, <laughs> but I think they missed the point. Yeah. Um, and why it's not as scary is because now you're dealing with the characters as adults, uh-huh. and you're dealing with their individual fears and insecurities. Yep. There is and that's f- what it is playing on. Yeah. I thought it worked great. Yeah. I thought it was really good. It's not scary. Mm-hmm. Um, the first movie's much more creepy. Yeah, my only issue with the second movie is that, well, there, I have I have my issues with the two movies in general, but my, the only issue with the second movie as a movie is um, that there are some scenes in it that felt like it could have been in the first movie, like when it flashes yeah. back to them as kids. There is, yeah. Like mainly, um, we're like, oh, there was some time we had when we broke apart and before we went after Pennywise again. <laughs> yeah, I think you know, I think, and I that did stand out a little bit, but I don't necessarily think that was Muschietti's fault. Andy Machete, the director, writer, mm-hmm. director. Oh, I thought you meant uh, I, Machete. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Machete. Charlie um, Sheen. I think that probably had to do... My understanding is the first movie had, like, no budget. Right. Um, he really... Most of the budget was put onto the set design right, and Pennywise yeah. himself. And then when the movie was huge, they actually gave him more to do for the second movie. So, yeah. in a way, it was like a lot of Band-Aids. Yep. So, I can't necessarily blame him. Okay, but, so, I, but I think it worked. But yeah. I, so I, I only know of, of the miniseries. Right. How does the how does the new one stack up against the miniseries, and is it more um, faithful to the book than the original miniseries? I, you know, no, and I'm glad it's not faithful. <laughs> okay. I'm glad neither of them are faithful. I know you were telling me about the, the book, book and there was book. some stuff where I was like, oh yeah, that won't translate yeah, well. Yeah, the book is be... just bizarre at points, yeah. and it, and, but it is it is cosmic horror. Yes. And there's things that are going on that you just, mm-hmm. how could you show that on screen without, unless David Lynch chose to direct it? Yeah. <laughs> you know what but I mean? Sure. Like, here's, yeah, here's the thing. The weird the, stuff. The two movies, the, the second adaptation, it's a more grounded version of yeah, the book. Of the like, book. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's what it good, comes off as. That's a really good way to put it. So which that, would yeah. you say would you say that one is better than the I, other? I one? would say the second one's closer to the book, although yeah. Pennywise I, I, mm. is more like the book in the original. Yes, because Because he's just a clown. Yes. Right. And Tim Curry does that so well and the way the scenes are structured, it makes him creepy because he is just being a clown. Mm-hmm. Plus, I mean Tim Curry, I love Tim Curry. Yeah, he, he's just kind of a creepy looking guy in general. Yeah, well, he so. can be certainly. Yeah, yeah. I know. Like, Command and Conquer. <laughs> you know the thing. The thing with uh, Skarsgård is, um, and don't don't get me wrong, he was great. Hmm. He really was. You know, I think the only thing he had to do in that movie was not be bad. All he had to do was be serviceable, and and I think the movie would have been okay. But he was really good. It's just a very different take on what hmm. Pennywise was. Right. Right. And I, don't, I think it worked for the movie. Sure. I mean, uh-huh. You can't redo what Curry did. I mean, you just can't. You know, no, you can't. But, I mean, like, there, it, it strikes me as odd that in, in the in the miniseries, it's Curry and clown makeup. Not like, that's, and that's you know, and that's it. Was. Right. Yeah. But it, in the in the newer ones, he is like a really creepy, kind of deformed-looking, like, Harlequin-type clown. Yeah. Like, you have to tell yeah. that he's a monster. Yeah. 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 And, and that's okay. I think it worked. I think... The, I think that aspect of Pennywise and what he was or what it was, I think worked on on two levels because please call him Pennywise the dancing clown. He did not get his master's degree in dance <laughs> for you to just call him Pennywise. Yeah, he, he didn't yep. get his master's degree. He's drawing on people's psychic memories of those things. Who had um, a master's degree? Okay, well, My that, gosh, that could be. Um, yeah, you know, I think it works on two levels because it works for the movie by itself, but it also works on your expectations of what Pennywise should be. Right. So instead of rehashing what Tim Curry did, which I think would have been a mistake, they did something different, which worked. Okay. Yep. So. Cool. Um, I hope that within maybe a decade or so, an, another remake would ha- come out of it. Maximum but, Overdrive? No, a, a, another remake <laughs> of it would come out, but it would be my, minus one specific scene I'm not going to mention. It would be a complete one-on-one book adaptation with all those surreal cosmic horrors, and hopefully by that time, all the drugs are legalized. All the drugs, all the drugs, all the drugs, all that, the drugs and go to the all movies. the drugs that Stephen King did are legalized. So 
humanity could enjoy a non-screen one-on-one adaptation of it the way it was meant to be. I hope. I don't I, know if you'll ever get listen, that. Unless David Lynch is going to direct it. I, mean, I hope by then. Like, people are getting movies to their home, and there's no more theaters, because I am not going to go to a theater with a bunch of drug-addled <laughs> maniacs watching a scary movie. You almost have to be, because that's the book. I mean, the kids do hallucinogenics, so they can... Yep. Con- yeah, right. So they can contact So I would Canada, hope by then you so would do can... it in the safety of your own home and not at a movie theater with other drug-addled maniacs. They can draw on camera's power to fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you must bite his tongue. Yeah. <laughs> you must bite his tongue, yeah. Oh, boy. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, well, we should probably cut it short unless there's something you guys want to talk about. We were running really long. Oh, actually. boy. There's a lot of Stephen but, King I mean, stuff. You could just, we could go on. I mean, I Listen. Br- I briefly touched upon Running Man. I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, let's uh, let's end this episode here. Next episode, All Maximum Overdrive. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> and how we would adapt it. Guys, Maximum Overdrive starring Lindsay Lohan. Let's bring back what? Lindsay Lohan, guys. No. What? No? No. Oh, no. come on. <laughs> come on. Even someone my age could say no. <laughs> Timothy Chalamet, Lindsay Lohan, Maximum Overdrive. What? No, I, I'm only in if Emilio Estevez comes back. Yes. And, oh. the, and the Green Goblin You truck. know he's going to be back. Oh, yeah. And you know I would bring the Green Goblin truck back. It's Redesign too part the of my childhood. Truck and it looks have like the, the, have <laughs> the face be the, the design. The, the Raimi Spider-Man. Yes, the Raimi, Raimi Spider-Man. Spider-Man yes. No. The robotic, the robotic no. armor. Yeah. No. And Lindsay oh, Lohan God. and Timothy Chalamet could run away from. <laughs> we bring in a, a hot act, Timothy Chalamet. We bring in a former uh, up and coming actress, revive her career, Lindsay Lohan. Did Boom, really they're running away from a trick. Like, share, subscribe. Oh, come on. <laughs> Don't cut me short. It's a great Dislike, idea. Dislike, You know comments. what? I'm going to stop talking about it, not because it's a bad idea, but because I don't want someone to take it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, like, subscribe. <laughs> Mention in the comments what your favorite uh, adaptation of a Stephen yeah, King I, book is. I feel like this show is running super long, and we've barely scratched the surface of yeah. Stephen King. Yeah, next adaptation. week, guys. Matt... I wanted to talk about so more, much more, and it's just going on and on mm, and on. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, but don't worry. Don't fault, worry. Don't worry. We'll get into Maximum Overdrive next week, guys. It speaks to Stephen King's uh, uh, just prolific career, basically. Max Overdrive next week. Max O. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.